You know, in spite of what people say about the FAA, most of the time they do make a lot of sense. And here is a case in point. The FAA figures that if you want to fly around as pilot in command in IMC, it's okay with them. But they want you to have some recent experience or recency, as the FAA likes to say. Now, recency is for each category of aircraft. For instance, airplanes and rotorcraft are two separate categories, and you have to be current in each category. Now, in order to remain current for each category of aircraft, the pilot in command must have flown six instrument approaches, as well as having conducted holding procedures, and plus intercepting and tracking courses using navigational systems, and all of that has to be done within the last six months. And this must be done in each category of aircraft that you want to maintain instrument currency for. By the way, they don't tell you what kind of holding procedures they want you to do. You just need to have done some kind of holding procedure. Now, most of us in our day-to-day -day flying would get six instrument approaches in a six-month period if we frequently fly an IMC. And we always do intercepting and tracking using navigation systems because that's how you fly an approach. The only thing that you might need to make a special effort uh, for is the holding procedures. So, except for meeting the holding requirements, it's very easy to remain current. Now, there are several ways you can meet these requirements. First of all, you can meet them in an actual aircraft or an approved flight simulator or a flight training device as long as they're the correct category. Now, if you use a flight simulator or a flight training device, the IFR currency requirements are the same as if you used an airplane because there is adequate fidelity to replicate doing the tasks in an aircraft. However, if you're using an aviation training device or ATD like this one, there are three additional requirements because the ATD lacks sufficient fidelity. The first requirement is you have to do two nose low and two nose high unusual attitude recoveries. Next, you need to have three hours of instrument experience using the trainer. And finally, you have to do all of the requirements every two months. Now, now you need to log each of these activities to be able to prove that you are current. So even though you had to intercept and track a course to fly an approach, you do need to log it separately. So let's see how this works in practice. Now suppose in the last six months you've done in an approved airplane flight simulator three hours of flight, including holding and intercepting and tracking courses and one instrument approach, and you've also done one instrument approach in an airplane, which is now two instrument approaches. Now the question is, what additional IFR experience allows you to meet recency requirements to act as pilot and command under IFR? Well, you've only got two instrument approaches, so you need four more instrument approaches for a total of six. So you've already done the holding procedures and intercepting and tracking of courses, so you only need to do four instrument approaches. And by the way, notice the number of hours is not a factor. Now let's assume you've let your IFR recency lapse. Well, what do you do now? Well, if it's lapsed, you have an additional six months to regain proficiency. And you can do that by flying in an approved simulator or in an aircraft with a safety pilot, but you have to be in VMC conditions because you're no longer current IFR. So don't use a guy like this guy right here who's dozing off. A safety pilot is someone who's rated in the aircraft and is gonna look outside the window to keep an eye out for other aircraft while you use some kind of view limiting device. Now, let's assume, on the other hand, it's been more than six months since you've been current. Well, now you no longer have the option of going out and flying with a safety pilot or, or flying in a simulator. Now you have to pass an instrument proficiency check or what is known as an IPC, and it has to be in the category of aircraft involved, and it has to be done with an FAA examiner or inspector or an instrument instructor. And by the way, notice this guy now has been upgraded to he's an FAA a in, uh, inspector. So now let's assume you do go out and get an instrument proficiency check. 
how long is your currency good for? And the answer is you remain current for IFR flight for six calendar months after successfully completing an instrument proficiency check, even if you've flown no further IFR flights. And by the way, that's calendar months, which means it goes to the last day of the month. So let's look at this another way. Let's assume your recent IFR experience expires on July 1st of this year. What is the latest date that you can meet the IFR experience? Experience requirements without having to take an instrument proficiency check? And the answer is you've got six months and it's to the end of the month, so you can go until December 31st. So as you can see folks, IFR recency of experience requirements makes a lot of sense.